This happened about a month ago, and ever since then, I've been scared to peek out the window at night. It all started when my brother told my cousin and me how he heard loud metal banging, almost as if someone was walking around with huge metal boots outside at around 2am. He said that it was loud, like super loud. And since he sleeps on the couch in the living room, it woke him up, and he went to go see what it was. But once he pulled back the curtain to peek outside, it immediately stopped. Which was weird to him because he said it sounded like it was right outside on the street. At first, we didn't believe him and thought he was just lying as he often makes up things to scare us. But about 3 weeks later, I suddenly woke up at 6am feeling thirsty and right when I was about to get water, I heard it. It sounded exactly like my brother had described, loud metal banging and it sounded like it was happening right outside the house on the street. Being curious and thirsty, I went to go get some water and decided to peek out the window to see what the noise was. I peeled back the curtain slowly and only let a little crack open, just big enough that I could see what was outside. And then, I saw what was making all the noise. I saw a huge man who was at least 8 feet tall. He was monstrous and looked like a human but whose bones had been deformed and twisted in ways that no average human could bend them. He was also dragging massive metal chains. And with each step he took, he picked up the chains and threw them on the ground, which was what my brother and I had heard. I was dumbfounded at what I had just seen and turned around to grab my phone and try to record it. But as soon as I turned back around, the noise stopped and the man was gone. I was petrified and decided to run back to my room and I couldn't go back to sleep after that. When my brother woke up, I told him the whole thing but he didn't believe me. I asked him if he heard it too and he said no. Nobody believes me, and I haven't heard the noise since, but I still wonder what or who that thing was and what it was doing walking around in the street. My name is Haley. This story is not about me though, it's about my 67 year old grandma. Her name is Shirley Hunkins. A few years ago, my grandma and her friends were all anxiously waiting to hear any updates about their friend as the doctor told them that their friend was likely going to pass away that night due to her cancer. My grandma ended up falling asleep before any calls came and later woke up to someone shaking her bed vigorously. She was surprised to see her friend with cancer right in front of her. My grandma says she looked beautiful and was wearing a pretty long dress. Her hair was long and flowing and she didn't look sick anymore. Her friend said to my grandma, I'm okay now, you don't need to worry. My grandma wanted to talk to her more, but she told my grandma that she had to go. She then went to touch my grandma's hand with a warm smile, and as she did, my grandma felt an electric shock. My grandma looked down at her hand, but when she looked back up, her friend had disappeared. A few minutes later, my grandma got a call and got up quickly to answer it. The call was from the doctor, telling her that her friend had sadly passed away. My name is Bailey. I'm 5'2 and have brown hair and brown eyes. This story happened when I was 13. It was a Saturday morning and I asked my mother if I could have a sleepover with my best friend May. May had black hair with brown eyes and was also around 5'2. She hesitated, thinking about all the clowns that had been loose and roaming around the neighborhood. It took a while, but in the end, she said yes. I called May and let her know that she could come around 7pm. Later that evening, May came over and we jumped on the couch and started watching Wednesday Entertainment. About 20 minutes later, my mom went to the grocery store with my little sister and brother, leaving us home alone. We started getting hungry and decided to order a pizza. Around 30 minutes after we ordered, the doorbell rang. While May went to get the money, I went ahead and opened the door. Behind the door was a tall man, I would guess around 6'1", who was wearing a red t-shirt and black pants. He stared down at me and handed me the pizza. He then asked me, Where are your parents? Me being stupid, I told him that they weren't home at the moment. He then gave a creepy grin, and thankfully, that's when May came with the money. I think she could tell that I was feeling uncomfortable, so she handed him the money and closed the door. We ate and then moved to my room after finishing the episode and hung out for about an hour before we decided to go to bed. Around 10 o'clock, I went downstairs to get some water. As I was drinking my water, I heard some shuffling coming from my pantry. I was confused as everyone else was sleeping, and I didn't have any pets that could have made that noise. I ran upstairs to get my mom when I saw something that I'll never forget. My mom was lying on the floor, unconscious. At this point, I was starting to panic. I went back to my bedroom and locked the door. I then woke up May and started filing her in on what was going on when we heard a knock on the door. The knocks turned into banging, to the point where whatever it was was about to break down the door. We quietly jumped out the window and landed in the bushes. I then dialed 911 and told them someone was in my house. 
The cops came about five minutes later and started searching the house. Shortly after they came in, they came out with a clown. Paramedics also came out with my mom and rushed her to the hospital. Luckily, she wasn't dead, just unconscious. As the police were putting the clown in the car, he turned to look at us and then gave us a very creepy grin. The next morning, an officer came knocking at our door. The officer told us that there had been a clown posing as a pizza delivery man and going to people's houses. The disturbing part about this whole incident was when the police told us they found a pizza box under the bed with a sharp knife hidden in it. He was planning to kill us in our sleep. We were so glad to be safe and my mom had also returned from the hospital. To this day, I still wonder what would have happened if I didn't go downstairs to get water that night.